container of cedar bark rope is that when the Creator spoke to our people during the Great Flood, he said to make this type of rope and to tie off to Gunsight Mountain because inner cedar bark, when it's wet, it actually maintains its strength really well. Any other item, when it's wet over a period of time, will stretch and break. We're very honored to have the blanket that Chief Capilano wore to go to England and the importance of it is that our weavers can come and see how our ancestors wove and that's important for us to keep up this tradition. This is our forest walk. We have many different traditional plants and herbs and also berries as well that we harvest and pick every year. Both of our nations use every little bit of the tree for our transportation, our housing, our clothing, and also for spiritual reasons. The Cultural Center has been a huge part of reviving this art. The weavers are calling them revival blankets because weaving has not been done in this magnitude for over a hundred years now. Before you walk in the longhouse, we have the cedar bough branch hanging down, and that's just for protection of the people that walk in. This is the PALA project for the SLCC, the Youth Ambassadors. And it's just to show the youth how long it takes to carve and design a paddle. This is a Liotwat Nation dwelling. It's called an Ishkin in my language, also known as a pit house. The style of house is dug two meters into the ground. The poles sit on top of the ground and they're brought up to the center where the main entrance would be. The spindle whirl was used by our people a long time ago. Our people used the spindle whirl to weave wool. They used dog hair, mountain goat, and also inner cedar bark.
His method of carving was the old-fashioned way of putting a fire on top of a log, then scraping off the burnt part. He had said it'll take you about a year to make a canoe, but it also lasts you a lifetime. And there's another thing I didn't understand, is that they could build fires in this thing and then just carve out the black, and then they build another fire and carve out the black, and eventually it took a long time, but uh, all of this stuff is, is interesting to me. We traveled by canoes great distances. Even the Squamish nation traveled uh, by uh, ocean canoes. Uh, both our nations traveled as far as places like Hawaii and even Mexico. The culture that's being taught to the children just brought to me the feeling of hopefulness for the future. I just thought that was absolutely incredible. And then to continue the tour and see the children um, actually participating in some of the um, art uh, today, making their paddle rattles, it was, uh, it was just great. I, I just think the, the future is our children and here they are actually. It was uh, engaging in the culture. Fantastic. With our guests when they when they come here to the center, uh, for some guests they show up on their last days and they say that is the highlight of their visit here in Whistler. And we like to think uh, with our culture, our cultural center here with the Squamish and Lilwat Nations is that we deliver the, the real deal, that we have everything that uh, they need to know about both the Squamish and the Lilwat Nations.